Welcome to our service today. Today we celebrate All Saints Day and how wonderful it is to see so many of you in our service today and of course those who are in our parking lot. Today is our first inside worship. I do remind you to please be very cautious, keep your social distance, keep your mask on, and follow the regulations that have been set. All of this has been put in place for each and every one of our safety. So I invite you now, if you would, please stand, if you're able, for our call to worship. Holy God, we praise your name. Welcome again to our service. You will notice the, the candles are lit, and this is all in representation of All Saints Day. I remind you that many of our announcements come out through our niece newsletter and also via email on other notices that might come up. I do have quite a few other announcements that I would like to bring to your attention. Um, remind you that... Uh, this month, our uh, donations and collections will go for Carolina Caring, which is hospice. And that was list, a list of the items are listed in the newsletter. Also, I would like to meet with the elders immediately following worship for a very brief meeting uh, in the fellowship hall over to the corner near the kitchen. Um, also, I... Uh, we want to remind you that church council will be next week, uh, Sunday, November the 8th. This will immediately follow our chief elder communion. Also, um, the church council, if the weather permits, 
we bring a chair because we will try to go outside. We will exit worship and go and do our church council out in the parking lot because there will be people that will be in their cars that will be worshiping also. So that's the plan. We're hoping weather will permit us to do that. Also, I remind you that the deadlines for reservations for Thanksgiving Love Feast is, uh, are today, and so we need to have those by uh, next week, uh, the 8th, and so please get that in. That will be for the Sunday of November the 22nd. There's some apple crumb pies that are available. If you are interested and would like to purchase some, you can find those in the fellowship hall there at the freezer, and Jane will be there to uh, take your order and uh, get your pies to you. I think that is all the announcements, extra announcements that I do have for you. I do want to read you a note that came from the corner table. This is, uh, the corner table is, uh, did their 2020 Parade of Cans food drive. And the note, we'll put it on the bulletin board, which the way everyone's exiting and entering the church, it's going to be hard for you to see it. So, uh, it says, Our New Hope Moravian Church, on behalf of the corner table, we want to thank you for your participation in our 2020 Parade of Cans food drive. Thank you for your donations. In a total of your church collected 576 pounds toward our drive. Collectively, the community gave more than 23,000 pounds of much needed food. Thank you again for all that you do for our community. A lot of food collected, a lot of need. Thank you for all that you do for the community and for New Hope. I think I've covered all the announcements, so now let us go into a time of prayer. And as we enter our time of prayer, I would like to um, read a note to you um, these are very different times, and I usually put all these on the bulletin board, but I felt that these were very important for us to read. It says, New Hope Moravian family, you and your congregation have been instrumental in my recovery. I am deep, deeply grateful for each of you and the sincere appreciative of all of you and all that you have done. The power of prayers are so valuable, and I am living proof of that miracle. God has answered all of our prayers, and I am back on the road to recovery. Thank you so much, and blessings to your church. And this is Cindy, who lives in Cana, and they are, she is the daughter of our neighbors who are worshiping with us. They worship with us through the transmitter. Um, so this is Judy's daughter, Judy West. So we want to thank her for this note, and See the power of prayer and what prayer can do. And I hear uh, many other things that come to me. People text me throughout the week, different things that come up with prayer. So please continue to pray for those on our prayer list because it's very much needed. Some other prayer concerns that I have. Um, many of you know Glenda Townsend. We need to be praying for Glenda and Brian. Uh, and their family in the death of Glenda's daughter, Angie. So please be praying for her. You'll know, remember that it wasn't that long back that Glenda lost her husband. Also, uh, we need to be praying for Nan Eller. She is the mother of Karen Shokes, who is our administrative assistant. And her mother is in the hospital, <clears throat> had some surgery, and... She's probably going to be moved into Trinity Village. So please be praying for her also. Some others that I have, I want to remind you that Pam Gilbert will be having back surgery uh, at Duke on November 2nd. And the surgery is scheduled, she said, for 5.30 a.m. in the morning. So they're ready, and uh, she's ready to get this done. So uh, please remember her in this upcoming surgery. Please pray for our upcoming church council, which will be Sunday, November the 8th. Please be praying for those who have admitted their names to the ballots 
and the uh, all that we will be do doing, voting on our budget and um, other regards that are in accordance with our bylaws and rules of the church. Please read our list of those that are on our prayer list. We have many needs in our community. Jada Wilson is dealing with COVID-19. As many, as you will know, are dealing with this, be it them or their family. So please do remember her. We continue to remember uh, Tom Schultz's mother, Lib. Let us remember our elderly people as they age and are in much need of our prayers. So let us have a moment of silence and then I will close us in prayer. Father God, we come before you today and we come in celebration, Lord, in celebrating that you have opened the door that we might gather together. Lord, my heart is heavy as I look and see my brothers and sisters as we gather to worship you. And Lord, I think about all the needs that each one of them may have or maybe their families or their neighbors. Lord, we are living in times of unrest in our country and the effects of COVID-19. And we're dealing with something that we've never dealt with before. And yet we know that none of this caught you by surprise. Lord, all the preparation that we might make to deal with something like this. But you were prepared. So Lord, I pray that you will be with each one of us, that you will protect us as we reach out to one another and as we gather. Lord, we gather to worship and praise your holy name. We gather to worship you. Lord, I lift up those who are healing from surgery and the recoveries that you have blessed them. I lift up those that have lost loved ones. May they feel your loving arms cradled around them and comfort them. Lord, I pray that you will be with those who have lost loved ones in a special way. Lord, I pray for those who continue to have treatments. I pray for those who are having surgery. I pray for those who are struggling through the storms that we have encountered and fires. much devastation that surrounds us and yet we can come before you and rest in the calm of the storm because you are our calm you are our savior you are our god thank you lord for this day thank you for the rain that we've had lord may you continue to be with us watch over us Keep us safe, O oh Lord. Watch over all the members of our church. Protect and keep them safe. Lord, we love you and Lord, we thank you so much for loving us and for the provisions and care that you have given to each one of us. Again, Lord, I thank you for us being able to gather today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Let us now together stand as we pray our liturgy for all saints. Today we honor all the saints, past, present, and future. Behold a great multitude which no one can number, out of every nation and of all tribes and people and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb with palm branches in their hands. And they cry with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. These are the one of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in desert and mountains and in caves and in the holes in the ground. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were slain with the sword. They were burned at the stake. They were killed by an assassin's bullet. They were destitute, persecuted, tormented. These are the ones who have come out of great tribulation. They have washed their robes and cleansed them in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God, and they worship day and night in the temple. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and will guide them to springs of living water. And God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. Almighty God, Redeemer and Sustainer, we offer you thanks and praise for the holy lives of all your servants, the prophets, apostles, and martyrs, who have shone forth as lights in the world and sacrificed their lives in testimony of their faith. We thank you for the triumphant fellowship of all the saints in glory. We remember before you all who have been called to the more immediate presence of the Savior, and especially those most dear to us in our congregation. We rejoice in our present fellowship with them in our continuing hope, and in the promise of eternal joy. Let the cloud of the witnesses, the innumerable company of those who have gone before and entered into rest, be to us an example of godly life. May we run with the perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, And may we obtain entrance into your eternal kingdom and with the glorious assembly of the saints worshiping and adoring you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. If God is for us, who can be against us? Hear the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, who was dead and is alive again. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. To him who loves us and washed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priest to God, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. To present your offerings and tithes when you came in, And I want to thank you for your offerings and thank you for giving to the church. What you give is giving praise to our Lord through your giving, your gifts of giving, your praise and your prayers.
Let us now transition into the reading of God's holy word. Our reading today comes from Revelation, Psalms, 1 John, and Matthew. Our first passage is Revelation 7, verses 7 through 9 through 17. The great multitude in white robes. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise the, and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And from Psalm, Psalm 34, verses 1 through 10 and 22. I will extol, extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will give glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamp encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. And from 1 John Chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should call, be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for he shall be we shall be seen as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. And our gospel lesson today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 5, 1 through 12. And this is the introduction to the Sermon on the Mount. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and he sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them the Beatitudes he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, 
and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. May God bless the reading of his holy word today. And may he give to each one of us clear understanding. Almighty God, as we bow before you today, Lord, we pray that you would receive our worship. And Lord, we pray that you would honor us and let us feel your presence with us today. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the guidelines that we need and the word and direction that we need. And thank you for giving us the strength to be able to do what we do in your power. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Today we will be doing a monologue and um, the Beatitudes and Jane Bumgarner will be helping me with that today. Lord, can we talk a little bit about those Beatitudes? Whatever did you mean by them? They sound just like a lot of religious talk to me. Now my child, they are not just religious talk. They are the most important words I spoke when I was on the earth. Surely you know that, don't you? No, I did not know. You did not know. Oh my goodness, those words I spoke are as important for the way you live as are the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament. Lord, if they are so important, Maybe you better explain them to me. They sound very difficult to me. Very well then, let us begin. First, I invite people to be my disciples, to follow me and not follow the ways of the secular world. If you live as my disciple, I expect you to live your life with a different attitude to the sort of attitude that you see on television you hear on the radio, and certainly different from what you find on the internet. In what way is my attitude to be different, Lord? I ask you to live your life with the attitude that you see in the Beatitudes. You still haven't explained them to me. What does the first one mean? How blessed are the poor in spirit? What do you mean by saying that I will be blessed if I'm poor in spirit? My dear one, you are poor in spirit when you need to rely on me to live your life. When you need my help to face life. You are poor in spirit when you admit that you are a sinner. If you do not trust in me, you are not poor in spirit. When you have made plans and all those plans fall asunder, then you need to turn to me. I am your father. I sent my son to die on the cross for you. On the cross he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. In that moment, I was poor in spirit. When you commit your life into my hands, when you surrender control over your life into my hands, then you too are poor in spirit and will be happy and blessed. Okay, yes, Lord, I can manage that one. But you also said, blessed are the meek. Isn't that a bit much in today's world to expect me to be always gentle and meek when people are hurtful to me? I understand fully. There are people who will persecute you in this world. And at times you do allow them to do that. I'm not saying that you should allow people to persecute you. When I said you would be blessed if you were meek, 
What I meant was not to throw your weight around. Do not try to over overcome violence with violence. Please don't sell injustice by using violence. That is what I meant when I said, blessed are the meek. Surely you can think of those around you who use calmness in situations of violence to bring about nonviolence. Okay, I think I've got that one, but Lord, didn't you really go over the top when you said, blessed are those who mourn? I think you misunderstood what I meant. If you understood properly, you would say, and you would not say, I went over the top. Well then, Lord, just tell me. Now, I want to see you get out of this one. When I said blessed are those who mourn, I meant blessed are those who are repentant, who are sorry for their sins and sorry for the sins of others. I meant you're to be conscious of the fact that everyone lives and needs to live the way that I ask. When you are sorry because of that and you do not live that way, you mourn. I am saying it is good to let the feelings of being sorry resonate within you. It is good to be sorry of the violence and the murders that go on. And different, for example, in Kosovo and Sierra Leone and other places, it's good to be sorry for the actions of the secular world. Yes, Lord, I am really sorry because of those crimes. I could say I mourn because of them. You also said I would be blessed when I was hungry and thirst for what is right. That is correct. And do you know that the correct reason for hungering and thirsting is what is right? Because it's when we suffer injustice that I suffer injustice along with you. Yes, Lord, I know you said we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. But when I see injustice solved, once again, I start hungering and thirsting for justice because then I see another example of injustice. Yes, I'm sorry. And of course you do. Because hungering and thirsting for justice for all people means treating ourselves and others with dignity and respect. Yes, because there is no end to your need to hunger and thirst for justice for all people. Lord, you also said that the merciful are blessed. You mean that if I forgive others, I will be blessed? Now that's a hard pill to swallow. I'm sorry, Lord, but so-and-so is the greatest pain and irritation I have ever met. My, my, my. When you pray the Our Father prayer, you say, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. In other words, you ask God to forgive you. Then you, in turn, promise to pass on that forgiveness to others. If you look at life from the perspective of others, as well as your own perspective, the world will be a better place, and so you will be blessed. Well, Lord, you also said, blessed are the pure in heart. Surely, Lord, you know how difficult it is for us as humans, after all, you created us, to keep our mind from wandering. Lord, it is next to impossible. You said a mouthful there. You were right. You have temptations, but it's the way you handle those temptations that matters. Just that it is not simple to feel a bit of anger if someone hurts you. No matter is what you do. It really matters what you do with your anger. Remember how you forgive others is how you are forgiven. 
And I should say that purity in heart is not only referring to temptations. In fact, what I mean is that when you are pure in heart, when you stand up for your beliefs, when this puts you under pressure, you are pure in heart. And this affects you, and it affects all of those around you. You are pure in heart when you celebrate your faith here every Sunday and then put it into practice during the week. Lord, has this got anything to do with how I view and participate in the secular world and its community and governmental policies? Yes, my dear, it does. You are pure in heart when you uphold my God-given values in the world around you. When you stand up for justice for all people, when you put your trust in me, you are pure in heart when you speak up for me, even when it is not acceptable. For example, when others say bad things about me, and you take a stand as one of my disciples, and you say, I will put my trust in my God. I easily understand why you said that peacemakers will be blessed. We all want reconciliation and unity. We all want peace, right? Yes. But what I said was that the peacemakers will be blessed. I did not say those who want peace will be blessed. I expect my disciples to take action to do something to bring about peace. Not to just talk about wanting peace, but to put their words of faith into action to make peace come about. Finally, Lord, I just don't understand this. Being happy and blessed about being persecuted. You said that we would be blessed when persecuted for the cause of right that we would be blessed when people abuse us and persecute us on your account. Now you have really gone over the top. Well, let me explain myself. Why is there persecution? Because there is a clash between two different ways of looking at the world. I expect my disciples to have my attitude towards life and not that of the secular world. As you very well know, not everybody does have my attitude towards the world and life. Therefore, it is inevitable that there will be constant clashes of opinions. But what I am saying to you is that my disciples will be blessed if they do not compromise their values, if they remain faithful to me, even when it is not popular. I am saying that you will find true happiness and be blessed when you do not join in with the secular crowd and do what they want you to do. You will be blessed when you remain faithful and loyal to me and my word. I will reward you. You can be assured that the secular world will not reward you. Lord, I can see now that being a disciple of yours and following you is a real serious decision, especially if I'm going to be able to stand with personal persecution and remain faithful to your precepts. Of course, it is a serious Serious decision. This is the most important decision you will ever make. Remember, I said that if you want to be not my disciple, you must take up your cross every day. Not just whenever you choose to take it up, but every day. These days, people are dealing with enough and they do not want another cross to bear. But I am calling people to repent continually. I am calling them to walk in the image of my beloved Son. I am calling them every day to model their lives after me. 
I have set the perfect example before all people. My followers must not allow themselves to become polluted and contaminated by the attitudes in the secular world. They are in direct conflict with my words of truth. Lord, I think I have to go now. Okay. But I do hope you will think about our conversation. But before you go, let's say together and recall my description of a disciple and faithful follower of mine. I want to make sure that you understand them. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Dear one, Go forth and do good, and your reward will be great in heaven. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we pray for all those saints who have served you in the past. And Lord, I thank you for the willing heart of this one that has the desire, like so many others, to know your Beatitudes and to honor the Ten Commandments. Lord, we thank you today as we come before you, Lord, we, we come in boldness as we proclaim your word. Lord, we pray that you would strengthen us and help us to stand up for your truth and that we would speak of our faith Risen Lord, we put our trust in you and your promises. You, Lord, have defeated even death. Nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate us from you. One day, Lord, we will be together with you in heaven for all eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to please stand for our hymn of departure, 10,000 times 10,000. Oh, 
Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God and Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord. Be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all times, both now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>